Welcome to an example in which we'll approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. We're asked to approximate the area under the curve, graphed below, from x equals 1 to x equals 6 using a left endpoint approximation with five subdivisions or five subintervals. To approximate this area, we'll be determining a Riemann sum where the area is approximately equal to the sum of f of c sub i times delta x where f of c sub i would be the height of the rectangle and delta x would be the width. So let's begin by determining delta x, which will give us the width of each subinterval. Delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. So in this example, a equals 1 and b equals 6, which means delta x is equal to 6 minus 1 divided by n, where n is the number of subdivisions or subintervals, which is 5. So we have 5 divided by 5, which equals 1. Now let's go ahead and sketch the subintervals from 1 to 6. So we're starting at 1, ending at 6, and each subinterval has a width of 1. So these would be the subintervals. Now let's go ahead and sketch the five rectangles that we'll use to approximate the area. And because we're using a left endpoint approximation, we'll use the left side of each subinterval to determine the height of each rectangle. So looking at this first subinterval, we're going to use the left side, or this side here, to determine the height of the rectangle. And therefore, this would be the height of the first rectangle in the first subinterval. We'll look at using the right side as well as the midpoint in the next two videos. But again, in this example, we're using the left side or left endpoint to determine the height of each rectangle. So for the next subinterval, this is the left side of the subinterval, so this would be the height of the next rectangle or second rectangle. The third subinterval, we're going to use this function value here as the height. The next subinterval, this would be the height of the rectangle. And finally, for the last subinterval, this would be the height of the last rectangle. Notice how we're not given the function for this blue graph, so we'll have to approximate the function values using the graph. But let's first write this out using function notation. We would have the area is approximately equal to, for the first rectangle, we'd have f of 1 times delta x, which is 1, plus for the second rectangle, the height would be f of 2. The width, again, is 1 plus the third rectangle would have a height of f of 3, a width of 1, plus the fourth rectangle would have a height of f of 4, a width of 1, and finally the fifth rectangle would have a height of f of 5, and a width of 1. Now we're going to approximate these function values using the graph. Remember, function values are y values. So f of 1, is approximately, let's say, 1.5. So we'd have 1.5 times 1. Of course, we could leave off the times 1, but it's not always 1, so we'll leave it in to be consistent. Plus f of 2 looks like it's going to be approximately, let's say, 2.1. So we have 2.1 times 1 plus f of 3 looks like it's going to be approximately, let's say, 2.6 width of 1 plus f of 4 is equal to 3. So we have 3 times 1 plus f of 5. Looks like it's going to be approximately 3.3. .3. So we'd have 3.3 .3 times 1. Now remember, we are approximating these function values, so there is going to be a margin of error. But as long as we're close, our homework system will give us credit. So we have 1.5 plus 2.1 plus 2.6 plus 3 plus 3.3. .3. So the approximation of the area under the curve using these five rectangles would be 12.5 square units. Let's go ahead and shade the area of the rectangles. Notice how the area of the rectangles would be less than the area under the curve over this interval. And because of this, this is sometimes called the lower sum 
or lower approximation. Just because we're using the left endpoints doesn't mean it's always going to be the lower sum. It depends on whether the function is increasing or decreasing over the given interval. In this case, notice how the function is increasing over this interval. And because the function is increasing over this interval and the function is not negative, using the left endpoints does give us the lower sum or lower approximation, meaning the actual area under the curve would be more than 12.5 square units. Again, next we'll take a look at using the right endpoints followed by using the midpoints in the next two videos. I hope you found this helpful.